I recently published a video on how Western Digital was using WD Device Analytics, their version of a smart test that comes with some versions of WD NAS drives. Actually, really hard to find which models there are on that, but more on that later. They were using that test to start marking drives as warning and needing replacement in Synology DSM for any NAS drives that had been powered on for more than three years. And I said, I am done buying Western Digital Drives and recommending Western Digital Drives because of this. This to me is horrible business practice. And from that, a lot of users said, hey, this is actually a Synology issue. Synology was creating this test. Synology had that. And that's also been the stance of a few other new YouTubers. Eddie from NAS Compares believes that Synology purposefully added that test in there and threw it into worse mode to make sure that they would sell their own Synology na branded NAS drives at a massive markup. And so I decided to figure out which one it was for myself. And I started by reading code, checking through the web pages on how Synology actually runs the test and actually gets data from the test. And in the course of it, I found on every Synology NAS, what I believe to be the control document that was actually used to communicate between Western Digital and Synology about the WD data analytics. And it has every single one of the tests listed out as well as what the suggested actions are from Western Digital. I also found an incredibly similar document with almost identical wording for all these tests on a NAS manufacturer out of Japan which makes me believe that this is truly from Western Digital. And so we can sit down and read this document and choose whether or not Synology is at fault or if Western Digital is. All right, so before we get into this, if you've not seen my last video, essentially Western Digital drives, specific Western Digital red drives, were marking themselves as warning and needing replacement in Synology DSM if they had been powered on for more than three years of power on hours based off of the WDDA test which is a test that came out in DSM-7 for Western Digital Drives. This exact same test, WDDA from now on in this video, is also coming to the most recent QNAP update. So the next major version of QNAP will also have this test, though thankfully they are disabling it by default. According to Synology, it's also disabled by default for them as well, but it is also now coming to QNAP, and so this issue will be growing. And it is of my opinion, that this test should be removed from all NAS devices. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you why. Also, if you want a disclaimer on my biases and kind of my perspective on everything, I make 70% of my money off of consulting. So the vast majority of the income into this business is from consulting and then ad revenue and stuff comes about 30%. So the vast majority of my revenue does come from actual consulting with clients, but I do make money off of YouTube. I don't have any financial bias towards Synology hard drives or Seagate hard drives or Western Digital drives. I talked about that more in the previous video, so check that out for context, but I want to get that out of the way here. And so I also want to say that this has really been from my own findings. I've not been able to completely validate all this stuff, but I'm going to present the evidence here showing what I believe to be the actual control document that Western Digital sent to Synology on how the test works. All right, so first off, let's go in and talk about Western Digital Bias Analytics because it is kind of smoke and mirrors. I was talking about to Robbie about this and it's kind of impossible to figure out which models actually support WDDA, at least on Synology. Synology in their article over here has listed out only a few drives, but multiple users have reporting having this exact same test on more drives than just this. So it is definitely something that's growing beyond this. If you do have this test, be sure to disable it and there's a Reddit user who figured out how to set it in, D in actual SSH to make sure it's never enabled, or you can also just make sure not to enable it, but I do not recommend having this test, regardless if you're on Synology or QNAP, because of the way that it is set up, fundamentally. All right, so now let's look at what Western Digital has billed this as. This right here is the Western Digital site talking about what WDDA is, and this is the only mention I've been able to find on their website about WDDA, even though it is their own product. There's no list that they have about which unit support it or anything like that. I've been unable to find any of that. I've not found anybody who does as well. If you have that, please put it down in the comments below. And I'm also gonna be dumping a lot of this information on my forum site because I can actually list it out in text. So I'll leave a link to that as well in the description below. And if you look here, it looks awesome. There's a ton of great stuff. It's able to continuously report and it's looking at all the different data. 
and it uses actual historic data from the NASA itself to be able to give a good prediction and then they execute it and everything is great, right? So it's really billed as these massive service things and being able to be super powerful. However, when we actually look at the document that actually they sent over to say, hey, these are all the things we're checking, it's nothing more than a canned smart test th throwing a few flags. There is some good data in there, but a lot of it is just redundant based smart information. And so it's really not even that useful. You can get pretty much all the information from these tests out of the smart test. And I actually think it may be doing that. One of the fields in here, at least for the WD Red Pros from 2019, is that if they have had power on hours for more than three years of power on hours, that is qualified as a flag and in their own words, the user should replace the drive soon. And so that is where they're coming from. And so now to figure out if this was Western Digital's fault, trying to basically sell more hard drives like originally believed, still do, by the way, or was the Synology trying to sell more of their own hard drives because these Western Digital drives are horrible, they've got this horrible smart test. Not gonna lie, they probably enjoy that, but in this case, I don't believe they actively did that because I actually, Think I found the document that, they, that Western Digital sent them to go over it. And believe it or not, it's actually on every single NAS running DSM-7 and later. It is this file right here. And I will leave a link down this in the description below. And in this folder, there's only a single file, the WDDA localization resources. So what I believe this is, is I believe this was actually what is a form of the document sent over from Western Digital to Synology for what to do with the different error codes that were coming out of WDDA. We can look in here. And so these are the resources folder for Western Digital Device Analytics. And on the other side, unfortunately, it's a format I can't read. It's not ASCII. I'm not sure what kind of text format it is. There is also the thresholds and values, I believe, and everything like that. And if we come in right here, we can see the resources page had this single file in here. This is the English version of the WDDA localization resources. And this is the exact file that I also found on a Japanese NAS makers website linked. And I'm gonna show that here as well. First off, what we have right here are the essential hex addresses. So these right here are your hex addresses for the error code that is coming out of here. So. The one that we have been having all these issues with is A002, which was power on hours alert. And so there are multiple parts to this. We have the name, description, unit, and what the action is recommended by Western Digital. So part of WDDA is a huge part of this is it goes through and recommends a specific action. That's their selling point is it's not just hey, what's going on? I can't fix this. There's supposed to be a specific action here. Then I also went through and found what Synology writes to you. So this is what is essentially written to Synology saying, hey, talking about the user, this is what you should go ahead and write. So if we look through, the pieces that are interesting are the power on hours alert. And the description of it is right here. This alert will raise an advisory when the storage device has seen a large quantity of power on hours throughout the entire life of the storage device. The units are hours and the recommended action, hard drive has accumulated a large number of power on hours and user might consider replacing hard drive soon. And there is essentially the same thing for power cycling and a lot of things like that. The majority of these are replace the drive soon but there are also some nice things here where it's, hey, stop power cycling the hard drive to get it to live longer. And so right here, the recommendation from Western Digital Device Analytics told to the Synology web makers was that the user might consider replacing hard drive soon. And if you look at what actually was written in the DSM warning, it is essentially identical. And I also went through, that's actually right here, and I found the source code in DSM that also maps this to what actually shows up in the warning field. I should probably copy this on over, so I'm gonna do that now. And so right here, 
This is the warning that is actually displayed in DSM when this power on hours thing is flagged by Western Digital. The drive has accumulated a large number of power on hours throughout the entire life of the drive. Please consider to replace the drive soon. For more information, please contact Western Digital support team. And so if you read that and read what the recommendation from Western Digital is, you can see that they match up pretty close. So for those of you who believe that Synology was implementing this on their own accord and were just BSing it to make people buy more Synology drives, I think this shows that this was not necessarily the case because this is the document which I believe came from Western Digital saying what to do. And I'll show you why I believe it to be the document from Western Digital is Yano SL CO Japan. This manual right here. I found it running through Google. I did a lot of research on this. I did more research for this video than I've done for pretty much any video. You can see that there is almost identical wording here, actually. And in this case, it was just 10. Interesting, it's different. This was also just a number, but it's also in a different order. So I did find that weird. Western Digital may actually be distributing different libraries to different NAS manufacturers because these are in different orders or they're in a different order for whatever reason. But if we read it here, HDD has accumulated a large number of power on hours and user might consider replacing HDD soon. And we will look at the documentation over here. HDD has accumulated a large number of power on hours and user might consider replacing HDD soon. Identical warning. So I believe that because two entirely separate NAS manufacturers have the exact same document when it comes to Western Digital Device Analytics, to me that believes that this document probably originated from the common term, which was Western Digital. So in my belief, Western Digital likely gave this to Synology, and I would bet that Western Digital also gave this to QNAP because QNAP has the exact same test in there now. So because of this, I highly recommend, and I actually ask Synology, QNAP, everybody else to actually remove this test from your operating systems. I don't see anything in here that is honestly useful especially when your users, I'm not talking about the users who are watching this video. The users watching this video hopefully now know this is just BS trying to get you to buy more drives. But for the 90% of NAS users who do not watch this video and do not follow this stuff online and who do not find data storage as a hobby, they are going to think that, hey, my NAS is telling me that these drives are dying, I should probably replace these drives. That's what it seems like to the user because that is how Western Digital has written it. So I really think that this test should be removed from all devices because I don't see it giving any gain to the average user. There are actually some interesting ones in here and I will leave a link to this. I'll actually throw it on the forum so we can talk about all this and have them linked there. But there's actually some pretty interesting stuff in here where it's actually got a issue between talking between Synology and the actual drive. And if you actually look at what Synology says about that one, oh, uh, where is it? They actually say, instead of contacting the Western Digital support team, if there is an issue with something like the connection, it actually says, contact the Synology support team, which is actually super useful. Or what everybody could do is just completely delete this power on hours test. If you see in Synology's case, error code two, just delete it. Don't worry about it. Don't even flash the warning on there. But that is the warning that people are going to see by far the most often. And it's also the least useful. All right. So I've now presented all the evidence that I've found on this. It is now up to you to decide. I think for myself, I will no longer be supporting Western Digital until they clean this up at all. I will not be recommending their stuff. I just will not be doing it. In the past, I tended to recommend Iron Wolves just also because of the whole debacle with SMR drives. It's way nicer not to have to say, well, you can get this drive, but don't get this, 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 this model like you have to do with WD Reds. Instead, I was always re recommending Seagates, but I would be like, yeah, you know, if you get a Western Digital, whatever's cheaper, right? Now, I'm not gonna be saying that anymore because I don't want this to come up again. I don't want somebody to enable the test and all of a sudden now they think they have to replace a drive that's perfectly good just because Western Digital is putting this fake test in here that is not bringing anything table. 
I want Synology and QNAP to remove the test out because honestly, I don't think they're, it's worth it. Just because there's a power on hours test is throwing that error. We don't know what these levels are for anything else and if they make sense. If you're looking to figure out when a hard drive is gonna die, and I'll leave a link to this down in the forums as well, read the article from Backblaze who goes over all the smart data. It tells you exactly what smart data to look for, and there's only like four of them that you can tell based off of their correlation if your drive is dying or not really well. Backblaze goes through thousands of hard drives a year. They know and they actually publish their data. So if you're looking to figure out if a hard drive is gonna die or not, Backblaze is the way to go. Western Digital Data Analytics is not. And so because of that, I really think it should be removed from everywhere. I will leave a link to all this information down below because there's a lot there. And let me know what you found. Honestly, this is one of the things where the companies are kind of being hush-hush about it. You can't even tell which Western Digital drives from Western Digital or from Synology side actually support the test. And so any information you've got, leave it down the forums below. We're hopefully gonna be able to get to the bottom of this. But from looking at the data I've seen here, I think it was likely Western Digital's fault. And I believe that as soon as QNAP QTS goes live, we're gonna have the exact same problem that Synology had for anybody who has those Western Digital drives who are running WDDA. Now, the reason this just started cropping up is the fact that the drives got added from 2019 and after. And so it took 2022 to actually start having those things. And so I worry that the exact same thing is gonna happen in two or three years with all the QNAP drives, but let's hope not. All right, well, I'm sure there will be more videos on this. Go and leave any other questions for me down in the comments below and have a good one, bye. All right, so literally as I hit stop record, I opened my email and found an email from Robbie from NAS Compares, and he had basically sent me an email from Synology. It's a pinned comment on his video. I'll leave a link to that down in the description below where Synology had actually already discontinued adding WDDA on devices. So any of the 2023 models do not have it already. So it's further looking like, yeah, Synology did not want this test and probably understood that it was an issue. And so they actually discontinued the test on all devices from 2023 and beyond. So it was actually never even on the 923 plus. So that's a quick update there. So one down, QNAP, and whoever else might be installing it, please disable it. Synology already has. It is clearly predatory tactics by Western Digital trying to sell more hard drives. All right, actual end of this video.